Good evening. My name is Emily Vito, and I'm the Assistant Director of Development here at Film at Lincoln Center. Tonight, we are pleased to present a live Q&A for The Artist's Wife, featuring the film's director, Tom Dolby, and the star, Lena Olin. The conversation will be moderated by Joanna Kaufman of the New York Times. We would like to thank our friends at Strand for making the virtual screening possible, and American Airlines, the official airline of Film at Lincoln Center for its year-round support. We'd also like to thank the Blanche and Irving Laurie Foundation for their support. Earlier today, we announced the opening night selection for this year's New York Film Festival, which will be the highly anticipated world premiere of Lover's Rock by Steve McQueen, along with the exciting news about festival drive-ins. Centerpiece was previously announced as Chloe Zhao's Nomadland, starring Francis McDormand. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for more exciting festival announcements by visiting filmlink.org or by following us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Once again, thank you for your support of our work during this historic time. None of what we do, including talks such as this, would be possible without your generosity. If you are not yet a member of Film at Lincoln Center, visit us at filmlink.org to learn more about how you can receive NYFF pre-sale access, member discounts, and more all year long. Now, I'm gonna turn it over to Joanna Kaufman. It's Joan, by the way. Oh, Joan, oh my gosh, I'm so <laughs> okay. sorry. It's all right. Um, let me first uh, start by congratulating Tom, whose movie just won Best U.S. Independent Feature at the Sonoma International Film Festival. Thank you, thank you. Well, Lena, Lena, I, I share this very much with Lena. So. Um, I should also say that Tom, in addition to being director of this movie, apparently had a secondary role as Cupid. Uh, during the first uh, few days of the movie, he would go back and forth between Lena, who had the title role, and Bruce Dern, who played the artist of the title, um, telling each other how wonderful the other thought. No, but it, it was a very, it was all very true. And, you know, I do have to say, it, Lena gave me some amazing advice in one of our first phone conversations. She said, sometimes you get lucky and there's like real chemistry between two actors. And I do feel like this was a case where there was that real chemistry. But, you know, as a director, you always wanted to maximize whatever you can. And so, you know, it's such a bizarre situation. You know, literally these two people are showing up and then the next morning, their husband and wife on set, you know, boom, you know, nice to meet you. And so, um, you know, it was, it, I think within, you know, I don't know, the first hour, you, Lena, you said to me, you know, oh, there's just something about Bruce. I'm really, I'm excited. This is really exciting. And, you know, then I'd go over to Bruce and say, you know, Lena's, Lena really is excited about working with you. She really likes you already. And, you know, I'd go, oh, she's, she's so wonderful. She's incredible. She's, I think she might be the most beautiful woman I've ever, ever played against in, in a movie. And, and, you know, then I'd go over to Lena and say, Bruce thinks you're the most beautiful woman he's ever played against in a movie. <laughs> so I, I did, I did feel like, uh, like, like a cupid it was it was fun but honestly i don't think i had to do that i think you guys had a, a natural crackling energy mm. i was going to say that i assume that that would have made your job much much easier that you didn't have to um force or foster the connection between the two of them um lena let me ask you what was it about the movie um that when you read the script that you felt this one's for me there's there's something about the there there's something unexpected about a female character that sort of gives as much as she does and not in a, and still is very powerful to me she was powerful on the page even though she made the so-called sacrifices and even though she she was all about love and caring about somebody else, which I loved. And also I felt, and I think that's actually a line, one of Bruce's lines when he says to the young students when he's teaching and he says to the students, you must paint what breaks your heart. You must put a piece of yourself on the canvas. And I think that that rang very true to me about you know everything we wanna do. And I think the script had that uh, because it's something that's very personal to Tom and he put it into a screenplay. And, um, and that drew me to it straight away. Had you, um, had, had, did the script just come to you? Had you known Tom before? Um, did you know that he was working on this? No, but it's funny how some, sometimes material or a lot of the times when it's when we're lucky it seems like meant to be because tom i didn't know tom 
but and I was working on I was doing theater in Stockholm at the time so I was in rehearsals but we did start having phone conversations and I felt very like right away that I knew him and I felt that he knew me mm -hmm. and we had this instant connection and I think yeah. very fast uh, on set Tom and I became like really close friends like we'd known it so we had the honesty which you have to achieve anyway but there was a lot of given I felt between me and Tom and and uh, and that was extremely helpful um, you know because so, so we could argue and we could agree and we could be you know I, I feel like I'd known him for a long time which indeed we hadn't but that was very helpful Tom, what was the origin story of the script for you? I know that you wrote it with a couple of other people, but tell me how did it how did it come about? Yeah, it was really it was really a, a few different influences that inspired me. I had gone through the experience of a um, family member with dementia, with my father having had it, and so there was certainly that element. Um, but I was also really intrigued by the idea of the sort of the in this case and in many cases the woman behind the man who is who is who is often you know supporting the the male artist's career but has a has a career and incredible talent in her own right and is un, is unfortunately often forced to uh, or decides to to sort of put it aside or put a pause on it um and sometimes until until that man dies you, you look at Lee Krasner and Jackson Pollock or you know I loved the movie about um, Alfred Hitchcock and his wife and it yeah. really showed how she was so instrumental in shaping his films and I had never even heard of her until I saw that film that that movie that, with um, Anthony Hopkins and you know and Helen Mirren and I just thought the idea of creative partnerships is very interesting to me and it's it's sad that the secondary person doesn't always get the, as much credit, you know? You know, it struck me, obviously, having seen this movie and the wife, that here are two women who totally sub subsume their desires for their uh, husbands. And I'm curious, Lena, if you felt in your case, you know, I certainly as a viewer thought, look what she's given up, look how her life has been. Um, and I found it baffling what she was willing to do. Did you feel that way? Did you understand her and understand why she would make the choices that she did? Uh, I, I think I, not initially, uh, but I guess it's out of love, you know, and I've been thinking a lot about things that we tend to do, both men and women, more often so women, out of love. Things we do because we love someone. And it's almost like there's, the, the, that's why I said sacrifice, because I don't see it as sacrificing anything. I, I think there is no such thing, really, because if you do something out of love, it's, you gain so much. So I think that her her way of, of being happy is actually through doing stuff for others. But, and that's what I meant with, you know, in the beginning when we talked and I, you know, she doesn't seem, she still seems like a very powerful person. And that, and that combination I, I enjoyed. And we don't have to, to be in the spotlight and it doesn't seem to be in need of hers, you know, even towards the end, it's, it's not, she doesn't have to be in the spotlight. She doesn't have to get the credit. And I think that's something very cool and very powerful. Uh, you know, you do something, you paint because you love to paint and it's not to get the credit or you invent something or you, um, obviously she, she does it out of love for him. She does it out of love, for her art uh, and not to get the credit. And I think there's something very cool about that, even though it's sometimes hard to, to grasp that well, people he, can function that way. I always, saw, I always saw her, if I can jump in, I always saw yeah. her in as, if there were to be a sequel, her, ne her next act is I think she's gonna keep, I mean, she says it in the end of the movie, I can do this again and, I'll, and I will do this again, 
And I yeah. really always saw it as she was going to do it again. And she, and that time she was going to get the credit, but there yeah. was this font, this sort of, this not final act of giving exactly, but just this enormous act of generosity to protect her husband and his legacy and his sort of his honor. And, and that did, did come out of love. Um, and, and yet I also want her to get the credit for any work in the future as, as well, you know. <laughs> I suppose though that she might have thought that the acclaim, that, that, the, that the plaudits for that show were in a certain way a validation of her as well, yeah. even though, even though yeah. she was oh, yeah. the only one who knew about it. Yeah, and, and even though she didn't get the credit, I think he needs it. He needs the credit. He needs to be in the limelight. He needs to be the fit. She doesn't have that need for herself, which is very cool. Yes, but I also think that she did get some sense of validation because it was it, the show was a success, so it yes. did sort of empower her. Yeah. Um, now, um, Lena, this is obviously not your first time playing a painter. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I don't know that Claire would be likely to wear a bowler hat. No. <laughs> they're, they're, they're kind of very opposite characters. And, uh, and the first time I played a painter was in my first American movie, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And that painter needed so much more. And she, was, she was very self-centered and she, she needed the light. She needed the... She had so many needs of her own. Um, but Painter has sort of come my way so many times in my work, which is interesting um, and fun. Um, so um, did you have to, though, sort of be reminded um, about how to hold a brush, how to approach a canvas? Was this all sort of because of your previous time at the easel, you sort of knew what you were doing? Uh, a little bit, I think, but I, 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 I always like to prepare a lot. So I did, I did go back and, and, you know, watch a lot of painters. And I had for another Swedish film where I played a painter too, I had actually gotten together with a Swedish painter and sort of followed her in her work and the sort of her, her way of, the way she went about creating her art. Uh, so... So yeah, I was prepared. Um, Tom, was this one of the movies where the pieces came together very quickly or was it one that was simmering on the stove while you waited for financing or Stephanie Powers or whomever? It was, de it was definitely more of a simmering. I like, <laughs> that. I like that expression. I think a lot of art is simmering. Well, the simmering think, was a good safe verb. It's time to marinate, you know. Yeah, um, yes. No, it really, I, it was, um, it was a challenge. Um, I think one of the biggest things, even though there is this recognition that there's this wonderful and large audience for films like this and films, real life films about people over the age of 50, you know, there is a huge audience. And I think many of you are out there watching it now. So thank you so much for that. And, and yet in Hollywood, sometimes as people consider, th consider material, look at stuff, it's this, this idea of mortality is very scary. To people and uh, and to me what was so extraordinary was that that Lena and I mean I attribute it to I think your European training perhaps but I'm sure there are many factors is that you're totally fearless in in taking on like a, a topic that is that is, is you know sort of scary or a little taboo to people I mean age you got you know age, uh -huh. God forbid we talk about age right and that's uh -huh. I think that's so silly but you know, you know how, how Hollywood is. Um, yeah. It's like if you're over 40, you're, you know, it's like I'm, I'm already, I'm already past that, <laughs> past that stage. But, you know, and then same with Bruce Dern. He just, he's, Bruce is totally fearless, um, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, I'm actually curious, Lena, with what, like, how, in terms of, did that, to did that topic scare you at all or, or challenge you in any way? No, uh, I mean, it's, it's something that I think there's so much interesting aspects of how you age and what's available to you as you get older. And I think Bruce, and I hope me, myself too, 
is such a great example of someone who doesn't, who, who stop, he, he doesn't feel like he has to stop. He doesn't feel like he has to act like a little old man. He's the, he's the craziest kid on set, mm-hmm. which I loved. You know, he was not, there, there are no rules. He was, yeah, he was like a crazy child to work with in the best way. <laughs> And yeah. I think that, you know, to show on screen people that don't, oh, now I'm at a certain age and now I have to behave like a little old lady or like a little old man. And, yeah. and yeah. I think it's so refreshing to tell stories about people that are not young, that are old, that have conflicts, that have, have, have jealousy and, and, and passion and love and struggle and, all of those things that keep us alive and 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 that we have to see that to get i get inspired myself when i see actors or actresses do stuff that are not young or perfect but do stuff that i see as brave or full of life um and that's important i want to inspire people not to be like okay i need to go and bury myself or at least start behaving like i have no life anymore because i'm 45 you know that that would be that that's so horrible so i want to inspire women to keep on being women for as long as they want to or feel it in their yeah. hearts i think that's yeah that's so great i mean this idea i love the idea of the third act i don't even like labeling it as a number but mm-hmm. it's kind of called the third act you know it's yeah. like why can't that be as exciting as the first act or the second act yeah it doesn't it you know, unfortunately you- we're in a time now when we're like we're stuck at home, so it can only be that ex- so exciting, you know. <laughs> yeah. Our excitement level is a little reduced, but you know, I just love this idea of you know people, you know, traveling or taking up something like painting or just doing something yeah. outrageous, you know. Yeah. I mean, to me, Stephanie Powers taking her clothes off is like fabulous. It, to me, that was such a celebration, and we, she and I, talked a lot about that and how it was really this like celebration of the beauty of the body at any age you know did you have did having say stephanie in or lena or bruce sort of change did it make things in the movie possible that you think it perhaps wouldn't have been possible with other people did they were there lines that they contributed were there bits of action or um uh just bits of business that they contributed that you hadn't thought of or hadn't had there before. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so definitely. Well, with both with both Bruce and Lena. Um, I mean, Bruce is a big improviser, and he will sort of. And it was very sweet because when we first talked on the phone, and then we had lunch in L.A., and he sort of asked permission. I have a feeling, even if I'd said no, he still would have gone ahead and done it anyway. <laughs> but you know, he said, "I said, is it okay if I sort of." you know, the lines don't have to be exactly as they're on the page, right? And I sometimes like to fill in, fill in the blanks. And there are, there are some wonderful moments that we have in the film um, that are, that are imp- improvised and, and just really had to do with his connection to the material. And then I really found like that, Lena, that you, you were very much like ready to play ball with that, mm-hmm. with that mode of, and it's not, it's not a traditional, it's not sort of the traditional way of like, you know, one should say the lines exactly as they're written kind of school of thought. But I think, I think you have to be flexible constantly, mm. you know, yeah. and you realize sometimes things on set that like, oh, wait a second, this totally made sense on the page, but this doesn't make sense because we just mm-hmm. shot this and it's going to be confusing. And you, I mean, you rewrite, you rewrite stuff, you know, like two seconds before before you do, you know, do the first take or whatever. Mm. Um, Lena, there were scenes that I remember you're carrying the bags of Citarella groceries and the refrigerator and the tidy stacks of raspberries and blueberries. And it was in that much dreaded word, that much, you know, tired word, uh, curating a life. And it seems that in a certain way that you were creating a Mm. sort of, you know, a domestic, you know, da Vinci of domesticity, if you will, that you were creating a sort of life for him. And he even says that, that you create his life and he's the artist, mm-hmm. you create the rest. Did you see, I mean, and, and did that seem 
to that character as, as fulfilling as what he was doing. I don't, I, I think, and that's hard. Is she settling or do you think she, she had made her peace with it? I think she had, but I think there was constantly, there must be another need in, in her because that's, that's the, you know, if, if not, if you're doing it and it's just one person in the relationship that does it, I, I don't see, for her, it came very natural to do that. And also, I think that it's her way of, of trying to stop because she must sense that something is changing within him. And I think yeah. she has that fear from the beginning of the movie, even though, you know, he's in the beginning, he's not so erratic. And, but I, she definitely senses that something is wrong. And I think that what she does with the blueberries and the drinks and the pomegranates and all of those things is, we're trying sometimes when things are inevitable, we're trying with practical things like that to stop something from happening. And I think that's what she's doing. And that's very human and very relatable. More so than that. I don't think that has been their lives before, but I think now it's sort of that she senses that something is really collapsing and something is going very wrong. And that's why she... You know, if I organize the blueberries, if I if I if I give mm -hmm. him meals at a certain hour and the turmeric and the, the then we can avoid this catastrophe that we're heading towards. Because she's losing him. And I spoke a lot. I don't know, Tom, if you if but this is very personal to Tom, but I spoke to to your mom. Can I yeah. can I talk yeah, about sure, that, Tom? Sure. No, that's yeah, she was very open about it and I thought yeah. that was so because I talked to her and I said I feel so because I'm sort of trying to create something and it's based a little bit on 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 your life and your experience and I feel and but she was super open and she wanted to share and and what was so moving to me was and I said how did you bear it how did you handle it because and when she said I I felt that I was I lost my best friend and I think that is so heartbreaking. And that's, you know, because normally you go through bad things. If it's another form of disease, you go through it together in a way. But with this darn dementia, it's, you, you're alone. And I think that she's trying to build while she, she knows that it's collapsing. Um, have you, aside from Tom's mother, have you... Have you known women like Claire, not dealing with mates with dementia, but who have sort of given their lives over to their husbands, though they, though in so doing, it meant putting aside ambitions that they might have had, even though maybe not fully articulated ambitions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think everywhere, and you meet... And sometimes it's done with, because there's a need and I love and I, this is what I want to do. But sometimes I think it's really, you know, people giving up a lot, um, you know, certainly women giving up a lot uh, to, to fulfill a dream that's m maybe more of the husband's dream. Yeah. Tom, since, as Lena has alluded to this, and, and you mentioned this was something that you, a story that was personal to you, how was it for you to watch the movie, and has your mother seen it? She has, she has, and I was, um, I, I, I don't know if I want to say nervous, but I was very invested in whether she would like it or not, and she loved it, and she totally got every every moment of it and, and the intention. And it was so beautiful at the end. She said, this is an, an incredible movie, which of course, you know, as, as, as you know, you expect your mother to say that, you know. <laughs> if mom doesn't say it, who is going to? <laughs> right, exactly. So, but that was lovely. But what she said that really stuck with me, she said, people have to see this movie. People who are, you know, people who are going through this with their spouses, people who are, you know, of a certain age who are going through these struggles because for her, she really, she felt very alone. She felt very alone in, in this, um, this journey. It was, it was very embarrassing. 
at first and not knowing there was a long period of sort of not knowing exactly things were like a little bit off with my father but we didn't know exactly what was going on and then eventually he was he was properly diagnosed and you know it's such a gradual decline and 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 it's not just one loss it's like a series of losses as you lose the the parts of the person you lose the this the sweetness sometimes and then sometimes it comes back and you know, sometimes it's the person who wakes up in the morning next to you is like a totally different person, you know? And that's, I think that's really, you know, that's really scary. But what I feel, I mean, for me, what is so important and why I'm so passionate about this film and about people seeing it is that I saw, I saw that, that journey that my family went through. And I mean, they call it in the Alzheimer's community, they call it call, coming out of the shadows, is this idea of, coming out and saying, you know, my family member has this and we are living with this. And yes, he, they may say some things that seem inappropriate or embarrassing, but this is what's going on and we're not going to stop living our lives because there was a period for a while when, you know, she did, she didn't want to go out, um, you know, to, to parties or even to a restaurant or whatever. And, but at a certain point you have to, you have to live your life. You can't just, you can't stop. And, you know, if your life involves your, your partner, then he's, he's coming along, you know? Mm. You know, one of, it, one of the really big things that struck me about the movie was that Richard being lost to dementia was the, was the only way that Claire would have the opportunity to kind of rediscover and reassert herself as an artist so that there was this horrible loss that she would obviously would have gladly given up those brushes for him not to, to lose himself, but that there was that thing that happened because of it. And I'd be curious to hear both of you sort of talk about that. I think that sometimes to be, this is very dramatic in her, her journey and how she 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 looks for and finds her art and and the need to paint again but i think a lot of us sometimes when 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 life comes hard at us we we feel that we at least or we get in touch with something that's very creative and if you're a writer which i'm not or an actor or even in life there's so many parts of life where you get more creative. The, the harder life comes at you, you, you get in touch with something. When everything is smooth and perfect, I think it's, it's hard to find the need to, or get in contact. So at least, you know, I'm sure we all have the experience that when something is not, when something is really hard, that sort of gets us in touch with something that's creative and 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 full of life actually and tom what about you yeah, I, I i totally agree i mean i think there is you know what is there that saying about the chinese the chinese um character in chinese writing is like uh, crisis and opportunity are the same have uh, the same symbol yeah. and i love that idea that's great that something like that. you know and i love this cathartic i mean for me too it was this cathartic idea that you can create out of something that feels tragic and sad and a grieving process, you can create something beautiful, you know? Um, and so for me, that was, that was the natural um, sort of ev evolution and journey and journey for her was that she does, she, do, she, she does these two things that are about connection, which is she connects back to her creativity and to her talent and she goes and she renews this relationship that has been a stra an estranged relationship, an unhappy relationship. And those are really hard things to do. I mean, and, you know, Angela's a bit of a prickly character. And, you know, I, it, I wouldn't want her as my stepdaughter. <laughs> no, no, I mean, she's very sweet, but it's, she was, she's, you know, she was difficult. I mean, she really... You know, I always thought that, I think that seems incredible. She just turns Claire away and says, don't, you know, don't come back here. Yes. yes. You know, it's, um, there was a lot, there's a lot of hurt. And I, I had written a lot of backstory about that and how 
he had really kind of rejected, he had been such an egotist over the years that he had just rejected her in so many different ways. But she played a part in it too. And so, you know, there's all that backstory. But um, I just love that Claire is saying, you know, we we have to start with sort of a blank slate and and create something new and re and reconnect, you know. Yes. Um, I must say, between your movie and the wife, I'm starting to wonder if perhaps we're going to find out after a while that it's the wives who've been doing all the painting and all the writing for all of these guys. So with on that note, um, I'm going to turn this over to some questions that are coming in uh, from listener, uh, from viewers. Um, let's see here now. Uh, let me just see what some of these, uh, okay, wait a second. Um, Oh, please. Oh, okay. How about this one? Please discuss Richard's need for sex. That drive doesn't go away, says the viewer. I'd like to know who that is, but there's the question. Ooh, that's a great question. Yes. Yeah. You go first. I, I have lots to say. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. And I know the first time when we did one of the, the, the sex scenes, uh, Tom, we we did it and and again bruce is very much improvising and 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 just there which made it so much easier and so so fun actually and then if we walked over you came over to us and and tom had tears in his eyes and and remember this and you were like you don't see this you don't see yeah. it's so rare to see older people having authentic like a love scene. And I think that for, for Bruce is very wonderful in the sense that, you know, he, he'll show up as a man uh, and he has no, you know, cause sometimes when you work, it's fragile and, and men are sometimes even more fragile than women when it comes to the sensual or the sexual scenes. But Bruce was so, free which which i truly loved and and uh and i i really enjoyed doing those scenes with him too um yeah you go tom oh i mean i just think it sexuality is such a vital life force and we i think in society and popular culture we pretend that it after a certain age it doesn't exist anymore yeah. or that desire goes away and you know, whatever, everybody's biology is different, but everything I've heard is it doesn't go away. And you know, I, I mean, I think my, you know, my parents were very, very physically intimate with each other, you know, until the end. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. and, and so just to show, yeah, I was so moved when we shot those scenes because it just, it felt like revolutionary to show that. And I feel like, yeah, you just don't, you don't see it that, that much, that acknowledgement that um, the sexuality doesn't end at a certain age. Um, someone else is asking what the casting process was like. Um, did you have um, Lena and Bruce in mind from the start? And perhaps that's connected to the previous question. That was part of the casting process. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we uh, we went out to to Lena, and I was so thrilled that she she immediately um, connected with the material. Um, and it was interesting that you know the the role of Richard was is a challenging role for a male actor to take because that is the role where you are really. I heard this from one agent actually. I said, "Why is this a difficult role? This is a little bit of a difficult role to." to cast, um, and he said, oh, it's widely known in the industry that once you play someone with dementia, you are considered old, and that's just it. And I thought, oh, God, okay, I wish I'd known, <laughs> I wish I'd known that secret. No, and I, but how, you know, how silly, how silly. Actors, actors can put on all sorts of, of characterizations and, and, and characters and so forth, and um, so, it was really, yeah, it was again, just that fearlessness of, of finding, um, you know, finding someone who was really, who was willing to go along for the ride. And then you, and then you're sort of building after that, you know, you're building a family and you figure out, okay, 
you know, who is, who makes sense as the daughter from a previous marriage and what does her, you know, what does her son look like and, you know, all this stuff and you're, start, you're building this world, you know, and that's, that's it's very, it's, it's a stressful part because you're doing it very quickly usually, but it's, it's a lot of fun and it's very, I think there's a lot of artistry in that and I give a lot of credit to our, our casting director for, for how, how everything went with that. So you hadn't necessarily thought, yes, I want Lena, and yes, I want Bruce. I mean, had that, had, it, how had Well, that you go, you know, you, I mean, when you go out to an actor, you, 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 you absolutely want them because you've, you've, you know, you've studied, you've studied all their films and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because we had, originally we had, I mean, this, this project had been in gestation for, for several years. Um, and the and we were we had a limited shooting time because we had to do it in the winter. And oh, yes. the, the funny coincidence was we had I had originally had this idea that that Claire was very American. Claire was from like the Midwest and and you know was sort of the you know came to the East Coast and and met Richard and 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 was sort of swept off her feet by his his brilliance and and that was like her story. And so I was thinking about you know American actresses and and we went to uh, to Laura Dern. And Laura, Laura was very excited about it, and we had we had a great meeting. And then there were some; she had a lot going on, and as she still does. Um, and there were just sketch; she was excited about, it, but there were scheduling things, and so you know it wasn't meant to be. But we stayed we stayed in touch. And then a year later, I, I texted her and I said, you know, I had told her that you know we had Lena Lena Olin in, 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 uh, as the role of Claire, and she was excited about that. And I said, I think and we're gonna go out to your father for Richard. And she said, okay, I'm, I'm calling him right now. He has to do it. Oh, that's and great. we got the, the word the very next day from the manager. And you never get an answer that quickly. I mean, it's usually people take their time, um, but it's, again, and I, and I, you know, I, tri I think that some of that fearless, you know, she would have been a different, a different Claire and, you know, I, I know. Well, she certainly you know, would have been a different second. player if it, if it had been Bruce Dern playing. Yeah, well, no, obviously it would not have been with her father. But, you know, it's, it's, you, when you, when you make them, you know, the second you start, it's like every other idea of who Claire is goes out the window. And I mean, to me, the only Claire is Lena, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, just ha you know, having Laura's support for for the material, and it, I mean, it's interesting because because it, there's kind of this circle. It's like Laura, I know, is a big Bergman fan, and Lena's Lena's, you know, your your mentor was was Bergman, and and so I think there is just that there's this thread of this sort of fearlessness of um, of taking on these roles, which is somewhat antithetical to Hollywood, you know, where people are are often so worried about. What is this going to do for my career? Will I be seen as old? Will I look unattractive? Whatever, you know. Yes. Um, I, I think we have probably used up our time. Thank you for having us. This was Thank great. you. Yes. Uh, are they going to Are they going to sing us out? I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Good luck with the movie. And thank you, yeah, Lincoln Center for uh, for showing the film. We're really excited thank to be part so of the much, program. Yeah.